Is Bart vs. The World the best Simpsons game on the NES? After the success of their first Simpsons game, Bart vs. The Space Mutants, it was clear that a sequel would be easy money for publisher Acclaim Entertainment, so once again they contracted Absolute Entertainment's in-house studio, Imagineering, to create a new adventure for The Simpsons. In addition to Bart vs. The Space Mutants, this was also the studio behind A Boy and His Blob, Trouble on Blobalonia. After saving the world from extraterrestrials in the first game, the plot of the sequel has much lower stakes. Bart is the winner of a contest that will send his family around the world, although for a game that advertises a globetrotting experience, we only visit four different locations, and one of them is within Bart's home country of the United States. Secretly, this was all an elaborate plot fabricated by Montgomery Burns, the devious billionaire owner of Springfield's nuclear power plant. For reasons not explained in the game, Burns wants to wipe out the Simpsons and has devised this contest as a way to do them in. In each area they visit, a member of the Burns extended family will set up traps for Bart, and if he survives, they'll face him one-on-one -on -one in a boss battle. This plot sounds a lot more like something Skeletor or Shredder would come up with rather than Mr. Burns, but it doesn't do anything to make the game less enjoyable. The team at Imagineering clearly started with the same game engine from the original, but they made some nice upgrades for the sequel. This time, Bart usually has a lethal supply of firecrackers available to use, so you'll actually be able to fight back against enemies instead of just avoiding them. Bart can also take a lot more hits before dying, but the biggest upgrade is in the level designs. Most of Bart vs. the Space Mutants takes place on a very flat, single horizontal plane. The levels of Bart vs. the World feel enormous when compared to the ones in the first game and feature tons of vertical elements. Exploration is critical this time because not only are there tons of hidden one-ups and weapon bags, but finding members of the Simpsons family will lead you to unique crusty collectibles, and if you find them all, it unlocks a bonus level and a special ending. Finding a bunch of hidden items to unlock additional content is a pretty standard feature in modern video games, but in the early 1990s, this kind of thing was uncommon. To fully explore the larger levels, a new power-up was included that transforms Bart into his alter ego Bartman and will allow you to fly for a short period of time. Unfortunately, the slippery controls from the original game also return, and the run button is still the same button as jump. The good news is that if you're already proficient with the controls from playing Bart vs. the Space Mutants, you'll easily adapt to this one. The game sold fairly well when it released in North America in December of 1991, mostly because of the Simpsons license, but the world-traveling premise was also appealing, and it got mostly positive reviews. While this game may feature some of the same problems as Bart vs. the Space Mutants, and is less true to the Simpsons source material, the improvements to the level design outweigh the negatives, and this game is more fun overall. Acclaim did release one more Simpsons game for the NES, Bartman Meets Radioactive Man in 1992, but after that, they focused on making games for the 16-bit systems. In modern times, this game feels mostly forgotten. It doesn't appear on IGN's list of the top 100 NES games of all time, but if you got any enjoyment from Bart vs. the Space Mutants, you should definitely give this one a try. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. This game contains some of the most sadistic jumping challenges I have ever seen with absurdly small platforms. Missing a jump could lead to instant death, and there are no continues in this game. If you run out of lives, it's game over. 
but what if I told you how to get tons of extra lives so you'll never run out of chances? What if I told you where to find every unique collectible item so you can unlock the secret bonus level and the game's true ending? And what if I told you how to defeat every boss? Even the dreaded Eric Von Burns? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. Let's get started. All right, Bart versus the world. At the very beginning, you'll have the choice to start up the game, or if you just want to play some mini games, you can choose the practice option, but they're just things like slide puzzles and trivia that don't really need practicing. So we're just going to jump right in and take a look at this story. The game starts up with an 8-bit rendition of the Krusty the Clown Show, which does look fairly authentic. It seems that Mr. Burns has sponsored an art contest, and the winner gets a trip around the world where they'll search for Krusty licensed merchandise, including the unique Krusty collectibles that we'll need to find to unlock the bonus level. As far as the art contest goes, to be fair to Bart, at least his looks like something that a child actually drew. The other two, I wouldn't be surprised if their parents helped out quite a bit. Of course, this was just a harebrained scheme cooked up by Mr. Burns and his assistant Smithers. Burns says that he swore a vow to wipe out the Simpsons, but in the show he usually can't even remember who they are. Mr. Burns' schemes usually revolve around making more money, and considering that graph in the background, maybe he should get back to that? If he wanted to get revenge on the Simpsons, he could probably just fire Homer for sleeping on the job, and considering that they're living paycheck to paycheck with three kids, they'd be devastated. Well, in any case, let's move on to the first stage, and right here at the beginning, you can jump off the back of the ship to grab a diamond, which is a one-up. Down here at the bottom, we'll find a weapon bag which will allow us to shoot firecrackers and enemies by pressing the B button. But the main thing we want to do first is climb to the top of this mast. At the top, we'll find our first crusty collectible, and to get it, we need to hold in the B button as you jump so that you do a super jump. You don't need to run and jump in this game, you just need to hold in B so that you jump higher and farther, and you want to get all the way to the right as you fall here so that you pick up a Bartman icon and you'll be able to fly. To fly, you just need to hold down the A button, and you'll be able to come up here and get a 1-up. If you hold down both buttons, you'll actually fly a bit faster, and you need to be careful because if you get hit as Bartman, you will automatically lose the power-up and fall out of the air. We got a Jebediah Springfield head to make ourselves invincible, and down here in the lower left we can touch Maggie and she will bring up the Krusty Toy Junk, which is the first of the game's unique collectibles, and we're going to need to find one of those in every one of these stages to be able to unlock the secret bonus level at the end. Now you want to come up here under the map and do a super jump off to the left where you'll find a Bartman icon and we're going to pair it with a Jebediah Springfield so that we're also invincible. Get the second Bartman icon down in the lower left, and then fly all the way to the upper left where you can get two more extra lives. And then we'll just grab a few more collectibles and jump back into the map, and we have nine lives to work with as we begin the game's second stage, the Great Wall of China. At the very beginning of the stage, we're going to see Lisa, and you must touch Lisa to be able to get the crusty stone statue. So if you miss her, just do a bunch of jumps and go back up the hill. You want to be all the way at the top of the screen and do a jump. You'll hear a little noise if you did it properly. You can press right to get going faster here in the downhill sections, 
but you don't actually need to be going faster. You want to collect all of these collectibles and there's no timer here. Try to avoid those gray patches, they'll do you damage, and whenever you see doors like this, always take the bottom door. Over here, we're going to come to some ramps. You need to jump as soon as your whole skateboard is on the ramp. So once you're on the ramp, hit the jump button. I recommend holding down the jump button. You don't need to do that for these first ramps, but you will need to do it later. And right there is the crusty stone statue. If you missed it, just jump back up the hill and get it. Over here, we're going to see some big ramps. You need to have a little bit of speed here, but you don't need to be going that fast. Also, make sure to hold down the jump button so you get the maximum height off of those ramps. And that's going to take you down to the bottom, where there's going to be two doors again. Always pick the bottom door, don't forget that, because if you pick the top door down here, you'll have to repeat the entire stage. So you do not want to do that. Make sure to go out the bottom door. Before we go on to the boss of China, let's take a look at some of these mini-games. The first is a slide puzzle, and this one is a bit easier than the one in Final Fantasy. The trick here is to do the bottom row first, so do numbers 12 through 15, and then don't mess with those ones as you try to line up 8 through 11. Once you have 8 through 11 in place, get 3 and 7 in place, then 2 and 6 on the right side, and the last 3 tiles will just fall into place. It's that simple. There's also a card matching game. This one is your typical memory match, and you get five chances. It does require a little bit of luck, but you can do this as many times as you need to, so if you mess it up, it's not really that big of a deal. You can just try it again. The very last one is Simpsons Trivia, and you'll need to get three Simpsons Trivia questions correct in a row. They range from very easy to difficult, but there's not that many questions, so you may just start remembering them after a while. Like, who was Bart's teacher? Mrs. Krabappel, very easy question. And once you've completed the mini games, which you don't have to do, of course, we can move on to the boss, Fu Manchu Burns. Pick up the weapon bag at the beginning of the fight and don't worry about running out of ammo. As soon as you reach zero, another weapon bag will drop out of the sky. You need to jump up and hit burns in his face whenever the fan is moving so that you can get through his defenses, but be ready to dodge the deflection in case you mistime the shot. The fireballs that burn shoots are slow and easy to avoid, but the deflections move a lot faster. Once he's defeated, we'll be able to move on to our second location, the North Pole, but first we'll see this little wrap-up screen where we'll get an additional life for every 15 crusty heads that we found. They'll also review the unique items that we found, which include the crusty toy junk and the great crusty stone statue. Before we move on, we'll check in with Burns and Smithers, who are very disappointed in Fu Manchu Burns, so they're going to be sending another relative, his second cousin's nephew's son, the Abominable Snow Burns. The first stage here in the North Pole is the Ice Cave, and there are a bunch of falling stalactites, so you just want to move through very slowly here. If you walk at a slow pace and just wait for the stalactites to drop in front of you, you should be able to get through unscathed. Your patience will be rewarded here in the ice cave, and that principle will be illustrated again with this next obstacle, the snowflakes. Just wait here for a moment, and eventually you'll see a crusty head appear, which you can collect as you jump across. But that's not all. If you wait for a while longer, a second crusty head will appear, and you'll be able to get a third, fourth, and even a fifth crusty collectible right here at the beginning of the cave. And five crusty collectibles is one third of the way towards getting an extra life, so it may be worth the time to grab all five right here. Of course, the next set of snowflakes has an even better reward. Just wait here for the snowflakes to go up into the air. Wait, wait, wait for a while because at the very end of these snowflakes, we're going to find a large diamond, which will give us a full one up. So yeah, this is definitely worth waiting for. And once you get that diamond, there won't be any more snowflakes at all. There's some difficult jumps here. You need to do a super jump across that platform, but even if you slide off the edge, you'll land on the platform on the right side as long as you keep holding right. 
Our next task is to climb to the top of this vertical shaft by jumping back and forth across these relatively small green platforms. To do it, you need to be holding down the B button so that every jump is a super jump. So hold that B button down as you jump and that will give you enough height to make it to the next platform. But you'll notice that for each jump that I do, when you get to the other side, you need to quickly change direction. So when you jump to the right, quickly turn to the left. And when you jump to the left, quickly turn to the right. Turning in mid-air will stop Bart's momentum and will stop you from sliding off the edge of the platform. And that is how you're going to be able to climb up those small, small platforms. That's the trick. If we come down here, you can shoot over onto the side and you'll find a Bartman icon. And it's actually an infinite Bartman icon, which you'll be able to collect as many times as you need. On the left side, you'll also find an infinite weapon bag, which they must have put so that you wouldn't get stuck down here. There's a one up in the upper left corner. And if you come back over to the right, we'll collect that Bartman icon again. Try to be careful not to get hit by the enemies because that will make you lose your Bartman and you'll have to go get it again, but it's really not that big of a deal because it will keep coming back as many times as you need it. Fly up and collect the rest of the collectibles and just make your way back the way that we came. It's a little bit awkward to fly with the low ceiling here, but it won't hurt you and the Bartman power-up will wear off soon enough anyway. We need to head back to where we saw Marge. You want to stand on this platform and jump to deflect the snowballs that she tosses over at Krusty the Snowman. If you hit it four times, it will drop down to a platform where you can actually collect it. And that's our unique collectible for the ice cave. Remember, we need to find one of these in every level. If you go down to the bottom here, you can find a Krusty head, which may not be worth the effort to collect. Remember, the trick to climbing on these platforms is to use super jumps, so hold down the B button, and turn around backwards right before you land. If you jump from that platform over to the right, you can follow this hallway, which leads to another vertical shaft with even smaller platforms to jump on. If you head down to the bottom, though, you can get a 1-up, and these platforms are the normal size. I don't recommend trying to go up the small platforms. They're much more difficult than the slightly larger ones. You just want to head back to the left and climb up this shaft instead. You can go up either way, but this side is much easier. And I'll show you where it connects to the right side. It's going to be right up here on the right, right there from that ledge. So that's where it would connect to the other path. But even if you took the more difficult path, you'd have to come back this way and climb up the left shaft anyways, because you can't actually get to the top from there. No, you have to climb up this left shaft, so just stay with the slightly easier platforms. Jump left and right. Right. Left. Right. Left. And when you get to the top, you don't have to go all the way to the top, you just have to go over to this ledge and we're going to come over to the right where we'll be able to jump up some more platforms and if you fall down at the bottom there it won't connect you to the other shaft on the right side you'll actually just die so you need to be careful if you fall off of any of these higher platforms you should be able to catch one of the lower ones like that but you need to be pretty careful when you're at the bottom up here at the top, if you head over to the left, you can take a little jump and grab the crusty icon, but there's nothing else over there. And we're going to head back over to the right, which is the way that we need to go to progress. It looks like a dead end here, but if you just run into the wall a couple times, it will move and you'll be able to jump over it. Remember that run is the same button as jump. Do a super jump out into the water and carefully jump from platform to platform here. You'll need a super jump to get across to this next one. Make sure to turn around when you land. A regular jump will do it there. But now we have to jump onto this bubble. Wait until it's reached its largest size and you need to jump on it right after it reaches that size, so right there. Make sure to jump again as soon as you land on the bubble and you'll get across to the other side where we can return to the map and go to the second level in the North Pole, the Frozen River. 
This one's actually a little bit easier than the ice cave. You need to jump a couple times on the piece of ice to get it moving, but once it gets going, you should be able to avoid the fish behind you without going too fast. Jump when you get to the end, grab that crusty collectible, and run across to get to the next ice flow. Do a couple light jumps here to get it moving, but you don't want to be jumping very much now. There's seagulls above you, and if you're moving too fast, whenever you collide with the next piece of ice, it'll go flying forward and you may not be able to jump to it. So you're much better off going slow during this part. So just take it slow, you don't have to worry about a fish chasing you right now, and if you don't do very many jumps, the seagulls won't get you. Lisa will give you a weapon bag, and you'll take it over here to this igloo on the right, and just start shooting at that igloo. You won't be able to destroy the bottom part, but if you take out enough of the dome, you will reveal the crusty ice cube, and once it's fully revealed, you'll be able to collect it. That's the unique collectible for this stage. Over here, we have one last frozen river to navigate, so just get a few jumps going. You don't have to worry about the fish here, it's going to be more of the seagulls, and you don't want those ice platforms moving too fast, or whenever you hit the next one, it will be difficult to jump to it. So just go slow, don't jump very high whenever you jump so you don't hit a seagull. Make sure there's no gulls in the way whenever you do decide to jump. You can jump whenever you actually want to. You don't have to do it at any special times. That way you can just get the platform moving faster whenever you feel comfortable. There's a diamond at the very end, and now we'll do a couple bonus stages. This one's the old shell game, and it's pretty easy. You should be able to follow that crusty head. Do you know where it was? Is it in that one? Nope, no, it's over here on the right. And you only get one crusty head for doing that anyway, so uh, is it worth it? I don't know, but it is pretty easy. We have another slide puzzle here. Remember, you need to do the bottom row first, then the second from the bottom row, which is eight through 11, then get three and seven in place, followed by two and six, and the final three pieces will quickly click into place. There we go. You do get a decent reward for the slide puzzle, but they take some time to do. The slot machine may be one of the easiest bonus stages. It's not all created equal though. You want to get three of Auto the bus driver. It's not hard to stop the slot machine where you want it, and you'll get four crusty heads for autos, three for mill houses, two for Moe's, and only one for Sideshow Bob. The boss of the North Pole is the abominable Snowburns. Quickly make your way towards the middle so you'll be closer to more of the holes, and whenever he pops out you want to jump on his head, and if he pops out right next to you, you can even get two hits on him. It only takes five hits to take out the abominable snow burns, and the biggest danger is that you'll fall into the hole there, so that's the only thing you really need to watch out for. Once he's defeated, we'll wrap up the North Pole and get some extra limes, and then we'll check in one more time with Smithers and Burns, who will be talking about their next relative, Ramsey's Burns. From the look of that guy, it's pretty obvious that the next place we're going to is Egypt, and the first level is the Great Pyramid. You'll want to carefully make your way up the sides, try not to get hit by Smithers that throws rocks at you, and if you get the Bartman icon, you can fly to the upper left corner where you'll find a crusty head icon. Just fly up the side of the pyramid. If you run out of Bartman or get hit, it's no big deal. You'll just climb up the rocks on the side. You'll see that the only way to get into the pyramid is this invisible wall, and then you want to run down this ramp so that you can avoid a rock which will be chasing you. But watch out for that spike at the bottom. You can definitely be damaged by it. Take out this green bat and jump across, avoiding the spikes on the ceiling. Then you're going to need to make some very precise jumps on small platforms to get across the water here. You'll need a super jump at the end, and that will get you to these bouncy platforms. The second one from the left can actually vault you all the way up here, which is a good shortcut. If you head over to the right, it's very difficult, and I don't recommend going that way. Watch out for the rock at the top, and then you need to jump on these teeny tiny platforms and you'll see this rock up here, which will start to move when you jump on it. 
Now it's going to disappear as soon as it passes the last of those small platforms, so get ready to do a super jump off of it to the right, otherwise you'll have to climb back up and do it again. Jump over each one of these bats, it's not too difficult to do using a super jump. And make your way over to the right where we'll find the exit, but before we do that, drop down and hold to the left where we'll find Lisa, who can get us our next unique crusty collectible. Kill that bat that's flying around and she'll start playing her saxophone, and as soon as she's done, she'll fly up into the air and the crusty mummy will appear. Collected, and then we can head back the way that we came over to the right. To get to the exit, we're going to need to ride one of those platforms more similar to ones that you may have seen in Super Mario World. So just follow it along as it goes. Don't worry too much about collecting those small diamonds. They're just worth points. And you want to jump to this tiny platform. And if you can get to that one, a super jump will get you over to the end. Now before we exit the stage, if you jump over the map sign, you'll find a Bartman icon. And you can fly up to the upper right corner where we'll find a couple crusty heads and two extra lives. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. Make sure to grab those extra lives before moving on to the next stage, which is the Valley of the Kings. Don't stand in the sand in any one place for too long or you will die, but if you wait just long enough you can pick up a Jebediah Springfield head at the beginning of the stage, which will easily get you through this first part. Just run on through the tornadoes, collect any items that you see, and when you come over here to the end, you'll notice there's a crusty head below you, and you might think we need to go into the sand to get that, but no, we're actually going to be going down there a bit later. So just keep making your way to the right, jump over any tornadoes and don't stay in the sand for too long, and you want to jump over to this spot at the top right. Free Maggie from the tornadoes and she'll give you the next unique collectible, the Krusty Sand Sculpture. If you missed Maggie, we are going to find a Bartman icon at the bottom and we'll be able to fly back up here. But for now we're going to try to collect as much loot as we can from the sides of this area. If you're wondering what's in the space right above where we rescued Maggie, there's just a grape squishy up there so it's nothing too exciting. Down here we can find some small diamonds which are just worth points, and then we're going to head back down and drop down to the left, where we will find a few more crusty icons, and a Jebediah Springfield head that we can't actually get right now. There's also some one-ups down here that we cannot collect. We're going to need to use the Bartman icon to fly up there. And there it is, and you can hear the Bartman theme song, which was a song they actually played on the radio back in the 90s. Pretty crazy. But you want to get that one up, and there's actually some more one-ups on the right side. So if you already got the crusty sand sculpture, you don't need to use Bartman to fly all the way up to the top and free Maggie and you'll have the luxury of being able to collect those things. Now if you need more Bartman, you can use this icon, but it's actually nice to take it into the next part of the level where we can fly up above this Sphinx and find a bunch of interesting stuff. So there's some more crusty icons and that will make it easier to get up to the top. At the very top is where we're going to find the exit, which is in the Sphinx's right ear. And there are actually a lot of surfaces here that you can climb on that you may not expect to be able to climb, like this rock wall right here. We're underground right now, so be careful of the stones that are falling, but you want to jump all the way off to the left where we will get another one up, and down at the bottom we'll find a Bartman icon, and we can fly right back to where we were at. There's also a Jebediah Springfield right down here, and we know that that's a good combination with Bartman, because now that we're invincible, we won't lose the Bartman power if we get hit. So fly up as high as you can, and remember the exit is in the Sphinx's right ear. So head on in there, and there it is. We're back to the map screen, and there's actually a third action stage in Egypt, and this one is the Sphinx. Now it seems like we just came from the Sphinx, but this one is a more simpsons abide Sphinx. I wouldn't be surprised if their art department drew two different Sphinxes and they just decided to use both of them. The key to this stage of course is going to be Bartman. 
there is a lot of vertical space here and the easiest way to get to the top is by flying. So you want to head all the way to the right, that's where we're going to find our first Bartman icon. So just take it as far to the right as you can and you'll find it right there in the right corner. Once you grab it though, you need to be fast. Make sure you're holding the B and A buttons, so both buttons, and you want to just take off to the upper left. So hold up and left, and when you get to the top, you want to hold left. And if you make it far enough, it is possible to catch another Bartman icon and get that one up. So that is a very tricky one up to get, and if you get it, you want to just make your way back over to the Sphinx, where we will find Homer. And it's possible to climb up the Sphinx to get to this part, so you can climb up the sides there if you don't have Bartman. You can also climb up that beard in the middle. So you need to walk on Homer's fingers and he'll drop in, and he will reveal the next Krusty collectible, the Krusty Mini Sphinx. So make sure you get that before you move on, and then the exit is at the very top. All we need to do now is just climb up the right side and we'll get on top of the head and we can jump up to the map sign. Before we head on to the boss, there are two bonus stages here in Egypt, so because there's one more action scene, there are one fewer bonus stages. And we already know how to do the slide puzzles. This is the game's final slide puzzle. Remember, you get 12 through 15 at the bottom first, then 8 through 11 right above it, then do 3 and 7, followed by 2 and 6, and the last three pieces will fall into place. The final bonus stage here is Simpsons Trivia, which is a fun one, although I do wish that there were more questions. Yep, Homer's half-brother, and of course, the catfish, General Sherman. You'll get three crusty heads for that one, and then we'll head on to the boss, Ramsey's Burns. Your weapons shoot upward here, but you don't actually need them to win. What you need to do is use a super jump to grab that thread on the side of the carpet. So just make sure to keep using super jumps and just keep jumping at that thread and eventually the carpet will be completely gone and Ramsey's burns will fall off the screen. Ramsey's is easily one of the easier bosses in the game. And here we will get our extra lives for all the crusty collectibles that we found. Looks like we're only going to get one this time. Came up a little bit short. I'm sure that we could have done better. But we also found the crusty mummy, the crusty mini sphinx, and the crusty sand sculpture. So now it's time to move on to the final area, Hollywood. And it seems that the final boss is going to be Mr. Burns' last relative, the most feared Burns of them all, Eric Von Burns. Just like Egypt, Hollywood has three action scenes that we'll have to go through, but you'll only see that third one if you get all of the unique crusty collectibles. The first stage here is a pirate ship, and it starts out with some small platforms. Patiently wait for that cannonball to go by before you jump across, then quickly climb the ladder before you get hit by a cannonball there. As you head across to the left, you'll have to just get through this pirate. You can take a hit or just wait for him to go way over to the left. And you'll notice that in this area, there are still crusty heads to pick up. But whenever we tally those up, we're going to have already beaten the game, so they're not really as important here in Hollywood. Over here, this cannon will fire, but it doesn't actually drop a cannonball. So we're just going to make our way up and to the left. There's multiple ways you can get through the bottom of the pirate ship here, but I think the easiest way is to just make your way up the left side of the ship and get to the main deck. It's much easier once you get up here. Over on the left side, we can find 10 more firecrackers, so that might come in handy. And we'll take out this parrot that's sitting on the netting and then climb it up to the top of the mast. There's some holes in the netting here, but if you stay on the far right side, you'll just be able to climb straight up, and then we'll take out this pirate with a firecracker and continue on to the next ledge. Watch out for that mouse, and then make your way up the netting some more. Over here, we'll have to contend with some cannonballs, and these cannonballs are pretty dangerous. 
so you'll want to kind of move back and forth to avoid them, but you do have a lot of hits in this game, so if you take a couple from the cannonballs, you'll probably be fine, especially since there's a Grape Squishy, which will restore one point of health right up here. You probably should watch out for that mouse that's right in front of it, though. It would have been a lot better if I didn't get hit by that guy first. Continue up to the next ledge, and you'll be able to go across the top of the boat now. We're going to see a gap in the masts here, so you want to drop down and hold to the left to try to grab some diamonds. And then you want to hold just a little bit left. You want to go right below where you dropped off to find a Bartman icon. And then you can fly up to the top. This is the easiest way to get up here. Up here in the upper right, we'll find Maggie. And whenever you touch her, she will raise the Jolly Roger flag, which is our unique collectible for this stage. Once you have it, you can just jump off the right side, and that will take you to this lower level, where we can jump off to the right again. Basically, you want to make your way to the far right of the top deck of the ship. That's where the exit actually is. So we'll drop down here, and there it is. Because stage 3 is a bonus level, this is essentially the final stage of the game. You can actually climb on these trees, you could stand on the mouth part and jump up to the upper branches, but watch out, they do spit fireballs. There's a few crusty collectibles here that we can pick up, although we realize that they're not actually that important. And you want to jump over any enemies that are coming at you in the bottom until you get over here, where you'll find a weapons bag. Once you have the weapon bag, well, now we can actually attack the enemies, although you may want to be a little bit conservative with your firecrackers in here. This is a long stage. As we head to the right, we'll come across a wrought iron fence. Carefully jump underneath that gargoyle. You cannot kill it with your firecrackers. A light jump will get you under there, and you'll notice that you'll actually fall through the areas where the spikes aren't on top of the fence. You can jump on those S-shaped parts of the fence in the background though, so that's how you'll get back up to the top, and you can make your way across the top of the fence here once again. Here's another part where there's a gap in the fence, so get under the gargoyle, and down at the bottom there's a few diamonds, but watch out for those bushes in the middle, those will deal you damage. So be cautious of those and make a light jump to get under this gargoyle as it jumps upwards, and cross the fence to the right. Once we get to the end of the fence, we're going to come to the graveyard, but you see there's a hole near that grave. You want to skip over that hole, and we're going to head all the way to the right, where we'll find a few more power-ups. But watch out for the dark black holes on the ground. If you go in one of those, you will drop down into the area below, and you won't be able to pick up any of this other stuff. Be cautious of the smithers ghosts and the hands that come out of the ground. You can kill those with your firecrackers, but as soon as you do, they'll respawn, so it may not actually be worth it. There is a weapons bag at the far right that we wanted to get, and then you want to come back and go in the first grave, which is the very last one on the right side, where we can drop down and get a Jebediah Springfield head, which will make this part a little bit easier. Once we have it, hurry down at the bottom and cut across to the left, and you see that coffin? You can press down on those coffins to enter them, and you'll emerge in a different area. Hold to the right as you drop off that big ledge. That is the key move. This whole area is a bit of a maze, but as long as you hold to the right as you drop off that particular ledge, you'll find your way to the end. Enter this coffin, enter this coffin, and bam, we're here at the final part, the mausoleum. And yeah, this part is as difficult as it looks. You're going to need to use super jumps to get across the small platforms here, and we're going to need to use that same technique that we learned back in the ice cave. Whenever you land your jumps, make sure to turn back the other direction so that you don't slide off the end. This is by far the game's most difficult challenge. You need to go across this mausoleum, not four, not five, but six times. Yeah, that's right, six times across. Each time you get to an end, you'll be able to climb up, and I do have a little bit of good news. Whenever you climb up on the left side, 
you'll trigger a checkpoint, so if you fall off and you don't catch any platforms and die, you'll actually continue over on that side. So we didn't hit the checkpoint yet here, but whenever you get to the small platforms that bring you up to the next ledge on the left side, that will be a checkpoint. So there are a couple checkpoints here. The other good news is that none of the platforms here move. You may think in a mausoleum type setting that there may be those kind of bricks that slide back and forth in and out of the wall, but there's nothing like that here. So as long as you can navigate the moderately sized platforms, and well, that's one of the smaller ones you'll have to jump on, you will be able to make it to the end here. We should have a decent number of lives at this point. The biggest concern is that the items do not respawn. So if you use up all of your firecrackers, you won't be able to find more if you've collected all of the weapon bags. And there are a number of weapon bags up here. Even if you do use up all your weapon bags, you can still make it, but you want to be a bit more conservative with the firecrackers here. One thing that I do want to point out is that there are two ways to do a super jump. One way is to just hold in the B button so that you're always doing super jumps when you're holding it in. But the other way to do it is to press both buttons at the same time, sort of like you're trying to do a jump in Double Dragon. And if you do it that way, you won't shoot a firecracker when you jump. And that is a way that you can actually conserve your ammo. It's not super important in the rest of the game, but it definitely might come up here. There's a couple tiny platforms over on this side. Remember, you can use small jumps over here when you're climbing up the small platforms. So a couple standard jumps will help you out there. The standard jumps are not as slippery as the super jumps, so you won't slide off the edges of the platform if you just do a standard jump. Unfortunately, they're not going to be big enough to make most of the jumps here. So this needs to be a super jump to a small platform. That's a tough one. And we'll head across to the left, take out this skeleton, and we're actually getting pretty close to the end now. If you do fall from this height, you may be able to catch on to one of the platforms below instead of losing a life, but you need to pay attention to which tier you actually fell down to so you know which direction you need to be moving in. Otherwise, you may go all the way to the right or left side and find the platforms are leading down, not up. Over here, we're going to find the final area where we need to climb up on the left side. And that's also the last checkpoint here in the mausoleum. You can see the green map sign was up there in the upper left corner. We are so close. All we need to do is cut across to the right one more time and then back to the left for the final pass. We can do this. We also need to find that last unique collectible. And to find it, we're going to find Homer in one of the windows over here on the right side. This is actually not a very difficult collectible to find as long as we're paying attention. So just keep heading to the right. There's one more skeleton and the next window should be Homer. Let's see. Yeah, I think he's right across here. Yep, there he is. So jump across and touch Homer and he'll go back inside. And when he comes back out, he'll have the Krusty Stein monster, which you can jump back across to collect. Then we can climb up on the right side and make our final pass to the left. This is it. This is the final part of the mausoleum. And once we finish this, the bonus stage is much easier than Hollywood Sound Stage 2 and does not have anything like this in it. So a few more careful jumps. Remember, right before you land, you want to turn around to face the other direction, and that will keep you from sliding off the back edge. That's the trick. Take out that spider if you have a firecracker. Jump across. Just going for it now. All right. A few more jumps. There's a small platform. That's a tough one. You can also do like a little standard jump at the end whenever you land on a small platform. That can also kill your momentum and help you land, but that's a bit harder. I recommend that you just use the turn backward strategy. That will keep you safe. And there it is. The map. Now before we go on to the bonus level, there are a 
few of these mini games to play here in the final zone. Of course, they're just to get crusty collectibles, so there's not actually a real point to doing them other than getting points. This is by far the most difficult mini game. If you come into contact with any of those glasses, you'll go flying off the back of the bar and you'll have to start over. You need to try to jump between them to get the crusty collectibles, and there is four rounds of this. So yeah, this is tough, especially if you want to collect all of the collectibles. It's hard enough just to survive. All right, try to avoid the drinks that Mo is throwing at you. I don't know why he's wearing a cowboy hat. This seems to be the normal Moe's Tavern, but maybe because it's Hollywood, I guess? I don't know. I get the feeling that maybe the designers thought there would be an Old West themed stage at some point, and so this was originally designed for that. Alright, the game's last minigame is Find the Bats. I think they really ran out of ideas on this one. This is all luck. Just pick a coffin and hope there's a bat inside. Then pick another coffin and hope that there's a bat inside, and then you open up the last one and there's probably a bat inside. If you get three bats, you'll end up with three crusty icons, or however many bats that you found. Wow. All right, well, now that that excitement's done with, Let's go on to the bonus stage, Hollywood Soundstage 3. And it starts out with this animation studio. You'll need to be careful as you jump across that eraser because it will fall. And if you actually jump into the ink container, Bart will turn black and track ink around a little bit, which is pretty neat. So just watch out for the enemies, jump over the erasers, and make your way to the right side. Remember this platform will drop out when you jump on it. And watch out for these elves and the pens. That's kind of a neat little stage. And this last ink container you need to go on top of and press down to enter inside. That will take you to this strange film reel. And there's actually three floors here. You can just kind of let the film run if you want to go to the last floor. The third floor is where the exit is, and it will start to loop over again whenever it gets past the third floor, so you can run it by a few times. If you want to see all the floors, though, I will show you what's in here. There's some interesting stuff, including these director chairs, which if you bounce on for long enough can get you some good height. And we'll also see the characters from Itchy and Scratchy. Itchy and Scratchy, I think, was some kind of social commentary on the nature and violence of old-timey cartoons like the Looney Tunes. But it was probably one of the funnier parts of the show. Some pretty creative stuff on those Itchy and Scratchy cartoons. Over here, there's a Jebediah Springfield head that we can get if we jump high enough off of those director chairs. They're kind of like some odd spring platforms, and they're a little bit hard to get used to. Any of the big holes that you see in the ground are instant death, so make sure not to fall into any of those. This is a bonus stage after all, you'd rather not die in here. Once you get to the other side, you can advance the film and go down to the next floor, although you could go down to the third and final one if you're just not feeling this. There's a couple audio slates there that you can avoid here, some unique enemies in this stage. And we'll just keep cutting across to the left and see what else is here. Some more itchy and scratchy characters. I definitely need that grape squishy. Yeah, that came at a good time. It's going to be kind of tricky to get some of these crusty icons without falling into those holes and obviously watch out for the dynamite. You can bounce off this chair to get up there and grab that crusty. And then we'll head back over to the left. Of course, any crusties that we're getting right now are just for fun. We're not going to need any of the extra lives that they can provide for us. And over here are some hammers. Yeah, I was feeling the Hollywood filmmaking theme for a minute, but I'm not sure what the hammers are all about. Maybe they're more of an itchy and scratchy edition. Grab those weapons, now we can fight back against itchy and scratchy. And up here, there's an extra life, so yeah, that's kind of neat. Take him out and bounce up to the next level. They fought and fit, they fought and fought and fit. Head on over to the left, grab another squishy, and we should be pretty close to the end of this floor. 
the map screen icon that we're looking for is going to be in the middle of the third floor, so no matter which side you approach it from, it will take about the same amount of time to get to. So here it is. This one has some film canisters. Watch out for those. There's some more weapon bags up there if you need them. Might be good to be able to fight back against these enemies. We'll do some super jumps to get up there and grab it. And we're just making our way to the center of this floor. That's where we're going to find the exit. And this is it. Watch out for these anvils, which certainly relate back to Itchy and Scratchy. And there it is. There's that exit sign. And to get there, you need to take a very big jump off of this director's chair that's to the right of it. So just keep bouncing until you get some good height and then just push over. And it's time for the final boss, Eric Von Burns. Considering he's the final boss of a difficult game, Von Burns isn't that tough. You'll want to try to avoid the megaphones that he throws, and I prefer to attack him from the right side facing left. It seems to be easier to get hits on him. You need to jump high up in the air and hit him in the face, and the only thing that will actually damage you here are those megaphones that he throws. Although if you're very close to the boss, you are very likely to get hit by one, so you don't want to get too close to him. But you don't have to worry about taking damage from the camera rig or any of that other stuff that's flying around on the screen. You need to get 15 hits on Von Burns to take him out, and that's it. We've done it. We've beaten the Simpsons Bart vs. the World. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. At this point, if you didn't finish the secret bonus stage, you'll get a message that basically says to try harder. But if we did collect all the collectibles and finish the secret bonus stage, we'll come here to the special ending. And in that special ending, well, I'm very glad that the game never actually says that Bart Simpson is going to cream pie Smithers and Mr. Burns, but that is literally what we're going to do. And you do have control of the action right now. So you just aim the pies wherever you want. You can move right or left. Take a shot at Smithers there. Maybe throw another one at him for good measure. And then we'll head over to the right side and give a few to Burnsy. Although that one was a solid miss. But you can do this as much as you want. And whenever you hit the select button, it will take you back to the title screen. The end. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally finish Bart vs. the World and collect all of the unique collectibles to send you to the secret bonus round. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos. Because there will always be more villains that need hit in the face with a pie. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.